So the first thing I wanted to mention is that I have f fixed now this description uh, back in section one of what happens. <coughs> excuse me. Um, what happens in this in this uh, in this last situation where you just look at the the figures with an asterisk and they're both negative. So my verbal description was correct. It's just that the the handout wasn't wasn't correct. So now let's go to section two, non-unique benefit of extinction. So here we're going to retain case three from last time. Uh, case three here describes the cost of polar bear extinction as either 90 or 105. The WATP is 90 and the WTA is 105. So we're going to keep that 90 and 105. That's a description of the polar bear supporters. But now what we're going to do is change our description of the polar bear opponents. Before we said that the polar bear opponents uh, had a value of $100 and that was a unique number. But now we're going to say that they have a separate WATP and WTA and investigate that case. The situation in section one where it was $100 is more characteristic of a company which has a certain amount of profit that it can earn. And here in in section two with separate WTAs and WATPs, you're talking more about the people themselves that would benefit from polar bear extinction. Now, to some extent, the, the second section might be more important than the first because the firms themselves having $100 in profit, um, that comes from the firm's customers, and the firm's customers probably do have a difference between their WTA and their WATP. So the firms are in some sense uh, a veil or just a middleman to the firm's customers. So I think that the analysis in section two is probably the more important of the two analyses, but it is a bit more complicated. That's why I did section one first. So let's start out supposing uh, the polar bear opponents that, um, that their willingness to pay if, if the bears go extinct is $80. Their willingness to accept compensation if you don't let them make the polar bears go extinct is $110. So as usual, we're going to assume that the WTA is greater than WATP. Again, WATP is limited by income. WTA is not. So let's look at, at the net social benefit. Oops, I wanted to use the other pen. Ah. Let's look at the net social benefit. Uh, first, if you save the bears and then if you kill the bears. So if you save the bears, then the people who are happy about that, the polar bear supporters, are willing to pay $90. The people who are unhappy about it, the polar bear opponents, require $110 of compensation. So 90 minus 110 is negative 20. So saving the bears gives you a negative net social benefit. Okay, so how about killing the bears? So um, killing the bears... All right, sorry, I just got interrupted. So we we're talking about um, ki um, killing the bears. The advantage to the opponents of killing the bears is 80. The, advantage, the, the requirement for the polar bear supporters to be compensated if the bears get killed is 105. And so killing the bears gives a negative net social benefit of 35. So this is a similar situation to what we had in section one uh, here, the save the bears and the kill the bears were both negative. 
here they're also both negative and so this is the paradoxical situation where society shouldn't do anything saving the bears is bad because it gives a negative net social benefit and killing the bears is also bad because it gives it a negative net social benefit and next example i wanted to show is perhaps implausible unlikely because it's gonna it's gonna violate this condition it's in, in in this example, W W A T P is going to be larger than W T A for the polar bear opponent. So this is unlikely. Let's just see what happens. So here, for, again, the supporters, everything is going to stay the same for for all these graphs. But for the opponents, I'm going to have W T A eighty five and W A T P bigger than W T A. So again, this is unlikely, but let's see what happens. So for saving, if the bears get saved, then the people who are happy are the supporters. They're willing to pay 90. The, um, the opponents require $85 in compensation if the polar bears get saved. So saving gets a positive net social benefit. If, they get, if the polar bears get killed, then <coughs> the, opponents, the polar bear opponent's willingness to pay is 110. The su polar bear supporter's willingness to accept compensation is only 105, so that's that's also positive. So in this example, we have another paradox, but it's a different paradox. Here, the paradox is that both of these numbers are positive. So saving the bears has a positive net social benefit. Uh, killing the bears also has a positive net social benefit. So society should both save the bears and kill the bears, which of course doesn't make any sense. Now, one question would be, let me move to the previous graph, how paradoxical is this? Maybe what society should do is choose, so, so both, both choices are bad, maybe it should choose the least bad choice, which is negative 20 rather than negative 35. Well, yes, perhaps, but the the standard presentation of cost-benefit analysis is that society ought to do something that has a positive net social benefit. And so it sees, it sees this as being paradoxical and really wants to kind of stop there and say, we don't know what to do, rather than to say, well, let's pick the, the worst of the, of the two evils. Um, in this case, I engineered the numbers so that both of these numbers would be the same, plus 5 and plus 5. So you really don't know what to do. Um, do. You can't make a choice here. Now, I don't want to exaggerate the problems of cost-benefit analysis. Certainly, there are non-problematic cases. Now, remember, the polar bear supporters have valuations of 90 and 105. In this example, the polar bear opponents, both of these numbers, uh, let, let me draw that a little bit better. Both of these numbers are less than 90 and 105. So the polar bear opponents, either way you measure it, have smaller numbers than the polar bear supporters. So the polar bear supporters are going are gonna to win here. And if you work through it, saving the polar bears, the supporters are willing to pay 90, and the opponents only require $85 in compensation if the polar bears get saved. So that's a plus 5. Killing the pol polar bears, the supporters of killing the polar bears are only willing to pay 80. The polar bear supporters require a compensation of 105 if the polar bears are killed, so that's negative. So here it's, it's clear how to make a decision. The net social benefit is positive in this case and negative in this case. So you want to go to the positive one, which is, which is saving, the, saving the bears. And in the last example, 90 and 105, if I now switch to make both of the polar bear opponents' numbers bigger than the supporters' numbers. So the supporters' numbers are 90 and 105. And if I make the opponents' numbers 120 and 110, then the opponents are going to win. And you can see how that plays out. The saving the bears is going to have a willingness to, to pay, willingness and ability to pay of the supporters of 90. But the opponents require a compensation of $120 if the bears get saved, so the net social benefit is negative 30. Killing the bears, the opponents are willing to pay 110. The 
polar bear supporters require a compensation of 105 if the bears get killed, so that's positive. So here again, you have you have a negative and a positive. So you're going to go with with killing the bears because that gives a net a social benefit that's positive, and saving the bears would be negative. So so certainly there are non-problematic cases, but the the fact that people don't uh, people don't value things with just one number, but rather with two numbers, can certainly generate problems with cost-benefit analysis.